Chances are you're watching this video on some sort of display. There are many technologies past and present which have been used for computer monitors, so I will speak in generalities. Light bulbs like at the start of the video are too large, but light emitting diodes or LEDs are smaller and more efficient. The higher the voltage across an LED, the brighter it is. A display is capable of electronically changing the voltage across each of its LEDs and therefore their brightness according to data from the computer. Since computers handle numbers in bytes, in other words groups of 8 bits, it makes sense to have the brightness go up on a scale from 0 to 255, the largest value a byte can take. The human eye has cells sensitive to red, green and blue light. By using a set of three LEDs, red, green and blue, varying the relative brightness of each one, the human eye can be tricked into perceiving the full spectrum of light. A mix of red and green gives yellows and browns, red and blue gives pinks, all three colours at full brightness give white, and at partial brightness give grey, and so on. A little spot composed of three colours like this, no matter what technology is used, is called a pixel. A display has pixels arranged in rows and columns to form a two-dimensional grid. For example, this video at maximum resolution is 1920 pixels in width by 1080 pixels in height. The number of bytes it takes to fill a display in memory is 3 times the width times the height. In simplest terms, the computer must update this many bytes in memory 30 or 60 times per second and send the result to the display. So for example, if you full screen this video in its maximum resolution, each frame would take up this many bytes in memory. While displaying graphics and images may seem like a purely artistic undertaking, and in some sense it is, in actual fact for a computer it is nothing more than gate logic and instructions we have seen so far. Each pixel has a horizontal or X coordinate and a vertical or Y coordinate, which corresponds to its position in memory. For example, let's say your display is exactly a thousand pixels wide and you start with the top left pixel. If you move forward 3000 bytes in memory, or the equivalent of a thousand pixels, you'll go off the end of the top row and onto the left pixel of the second row. There are many algorithms or long lists of instructions to draw windows, buttons, text and computer graphics, all by using this kind of arithmetic and manipulating bytes in memory. To display a simple desktop environment, a loop fills every pixel with the background color by repeatedly copying the sequence of three bytes that uniquely defines the color. The taskbar is drawn by looping over only rows of pixels with specific Y coordinates. A start button is created by filling a rectangle with a given range of X and Y coordinates with another color. Text is added on top by copying predetermined patterns of pixels for each letter or through some other algorithm. To display a window, it's necessary to know its specific width and height and the current position of its top left pixel. Adding the X value of the left pixel and the width by simple arithmetic gives the rightmost edge pixel. A title bar can then be drawn along with a border, text and so on. If the user moves or resizes the window, all of this arithmetic has to be redone and the window redrawn. The simplest computer graphic involves drawing a line between two points, both with their own set of coordinates x, y. The Bresenham algorithm involves a loop which draws just such a line by following a straight x, y curve, familiar from school mathematics. Draw three lines and you have a triangle which can be filled with textures, illuminated by simulated light sources and combined with thousands of others to make a 3D shape. No matter how complicated, it all comes down to addition, multiplication and jump instructions compiled into functions. Sound is the other major form of output from a computer. Sounds are waves of high and low pressure moving through the air. Speakers and headphones produce sounds by moving a membrane back and forth. There is a permanent magnet attached to the membrane inside a fixed conducting coil. An oscillating current through the coil pulls the magnet in and out, making the membrane oscillate and creating a sound. The computer breaks up time into short steps and specifies the current at every step in time by sending a binary number to a sound card. Electronics turn the digital binary values into the appropriate current. A microphone works in exactly the opposite way. There are many input devices out there, but the way a computer deals with inputs is usually the same. The inputs leave so-called messages in memory, which are groups of bytes of preset length identifying the device and what exactly the input consists of. For example, a message queue may have in it three messages of eight bytes each. 
When decoded, the first one states that the A key has been pressed down, the second states that the mouse has moved 30 pixels to the right, and the third that the shift key has been released. On a keyboard, the keys are arranged into a grid. When a key is pressed, it makes an electrical contact between a horizontal and vertical row, allowing the precise key to be identified. Between the keyboard and the computer's motherboard, the message announcing when a key is pressed down or released is relayed to computer memory, allowing the computer to act on it. In our video game example, imagine that the B button is used to buy things and the S button is used to sell. In Windows, these key presses have corresponding decimal numbers 66 and 83, respectively. In terms of instructions, the game would have conditional jumps based on the value of the last keystroke. If the keystroke value is 66, then a computer would jump to a set of instructions corresponding to buy. If 83, it would jump to instructions corresponding to sell. A computer mouse tracks how far left or right and up or down it has moved along a flat surface, and also which buttons have been pressed. A program, typically the computer's operating system, keeps track of the X and Y pixel coordinates of the mouse by adding or subtracting any changes in position received from the mouse. Say that a window with a button is currently active when a user presses down the left mouse button. The program will check the X coordinate of the mouse cursor against the dimensions of the button. If X is greater or equal to the left side of the button and less than or equal to the right side of the button, then the click is horizontally inside the button. The program must then check the Y coordinate is vertically inside the button too. If both are true, the button is considered pressed. If at any moment you have 10 buttons on screen, the program will check every button in turn if it's been pressed down or not. To summarize, a computer display is a grid of pixels, each one a group of a red, a green, and a blue light. The brightness of each light is set by a corresponding byte in computer memory. A pixel, therefore, has an arbitrary color, and a group of them, together, makes an image. Sound is recorded by measuring the motion of sound waves and saving them as binary numbers in memory. The reverse process is used to play back the sounds. External devices send messages to the computer which are placed into memory, allowing the computer to identify inputs, such as when a key has been pressed or the mouse has been moved, and then act upon them. Finally, I want to take stock of the entire video. I think it's amazing how doping silicon with impurity elements and performing relatively simple logical operations allow us to watch and create videos, process information, and even inhabit virtual worlds. Computing is all about building up simpler concepts to achieve more complicated ones. If you've got CMOS pairs, you can make a NAND gate. If you've got NAND gates, you can make any logic gate. If you have logic gates, you can make instructions. If you have instructions, you can make algorithms into functions. From functions, you can build up programs as complicated as you like. This also means that computers are very dumb. They have no intuition and must rigidly follow programs which have every possible eventuality spelled out in great detail.